So I believe I left off at the part where something ruptured on uh, Black Friday, the night of Black Friday, or the day after Black Friday. I think it was actually November 30th. Um, <clears throat> I went to work that day and I had, um, there was some sexual activity and I started bleeding again and I was hurting really bad and I walked to work. I worked seven or eight hours and it was very difficult. It was very difficult for me to walk back to my apartment. By the time I got home and I laid down, I knew something was very, very wrong, but I knew I hadn't traumatized my back or anything like that. Um, but that's where I thought I felt most of the pain and it was absolutely crippling. It was like I couldn't even set up in my to move my legs over and try to set up any movement at all. It was absolutely terrifying. And I had the medication, you know, I had, I had reduced myself to three Tramadol a day and I could take up to two Tylenol three for breakthrough pain. Um, usually I went through two, two pills to go to work, one in the morning and then one after work and then maybe one at night. And if I had to take a half a pill or a whole pill in between for breakthrough pain, um, but we were really hoping Dr. Wilson would, uh, or, or I would get my, the whole point of going to work was to be able to pay for an Obamacare plan. This happened, um, I immediately had to call into work the next day. The next day I woke up, I really couldn't move. I had gone to the bathroom on myself and didn't know it. Um, I was absolutely terrified. I called Nanette. I said, Nanette, something's wrong. She says, you need to go to the ER. I said, they're not going to do anything. They fucked up too bad. They're not going to do anything. I said, I'm already seeing Beth. They're going to tell me to go back to bed. So I stayed in bed. Monday morning, I call Family Health Center and I go, something's very, very wrong. I can't move. Most of the pain is in my back. Um, I sent an email saying exactly what happened, the sexual activity, and then um, all of a sudden I'm bleeding, and then all of a sudden I'm crippled. Um, that's a, that's a ruptured tumor. That's what that is. And that thing was at four centimeters at that point, not three anymore. But nobody knew because nobody would let Beth order another ultrasound. Beth Wilson decided it was a benign tumor, so everybody had to roll with her. That's against the law. You absolutely get to provide a second opinion. You can get a second opinion right there in your own office. Elizabeth Wilson even said that. She said, if you don't want my opinion, you can go see one of my other partners at Women's Health Associates. Get a different opinion if you want. Um, so they know they're not supposed to be um, tampering with evidence that way and coercing patients into believing one thing so that it covers everyone's ass. They know better than that. So Beth couldn't see me. She was booked all week. I'm like, this is an emergency, Beth. She says, then you need to go to the emergency room. I said, they won't do anything. So she, I said, I'm having to take more of my medicine again because it's the only way I can get to the bathroom. I'm having to hold on to the walls to get to the bathroom. And when I sit down to use the restroom, it's all I can do not to fall off because it hurts so bad for there to be any pressure anywhere on me, anywhere, you know, around the behind, the back, the abdomen, the pelvic area, anywhere. She said, you need to go to the emergency room. I said, they're not going to do anything. She said, have you gone to women's and children's? I said, it's a university hospital. They're not going to do anything. They tried to get me in a staff member's personal vehicle and get me out of town when I was almost this bad. I said, you saw how bad I was. They tried to get me in a staff member's personal vehicle and ordered an unnecessary use of force when I wouldn't comply. Um, and I recorded all that. 
So that's why everybody feels so threatened, because I have audio recordings of really nasty, criminal, violent malpractice of social workers and RNs in MUPC. Which I'm actually going to say for Lynn Curry. I'm going to hand deliver those audio files to her in Canada. So that she knows exactly what her daughter was exposed to and how they threatened her. That she was absolutely under duress when they made her sign away her. Uh, made Sasha Minu Curry sign away her. Her um, scholarship her academic scholarship and bullied her off the swim team because she was raped by two football players. And these are good old boys, boy, they like their football. Fuckers. Anyway, that's how they make their bread and butter. So I'm crippled again, ruptured basically what we now know to be a pattern of rupturing of this tumor, which means it's not a, just a common benign fibroid. And Beth didn't believe for one minute it was a common benign fibroid. I finally get in to see Beth. <laughs> She's apparently not having lots of orgasms. So anybody who has any sort of sexual activity and is not ashamed of it, she's fascinated with that. And I was like, Beth, that email was to show a pattern of bleeding. She goes, oh, don't worry about it. I put it in your file. <clears throat> she said, so what happened? And I went over it with her again. It was a very, you know, very clinical. There was no, you know, hanky-panky, nothing like that. My God, she had a rock on her finger. Um... I remember she did her exam. She had me stand up, and it was almost impossible for me to be able to stand up. And I was pretty much dripping in sweat. And I had to, uh, to medicate a lot just to be able to get in there. <clears throat> the nurse was like, do you want any more pain medicine? I said, no, I don't need any refill. Something's wrong here. Your pain medicine isn't get More pain medicine is going to help. Something's freaking wrong here. I didn't say it like that, but I was like, no, this isn't about pain medicine. I just told you guys to reduce my pain medicine. There's something wrong. I stand up, and it was all I could do to stand up, and I lean on the exam table, and Beth lifts up my shirt, and I'm wearing elastic sweatpants. And she pulls the sweatpants band out, and she jumps back. She says, you've got swelling back there. That's too low to be your back. That's This is not your back. All this pain you're having. She said, that's your uterus. You need to go to Women's and Children's. And I said, there's no way in hell I'm going to a University of Missouri hospital. Why the hell she didn't have Nanette come in there and say, Nanette, she's not going to get proper treatment at Boone. We already know that. She's Because I already recorded me telling Beth everything that happened at Boone with them lying about the tumor. And then keep lying to me and saying I needed psych and all this other bullshit. Every autistic person probably does need support. But they were trying to make it look like all of this was just all in my head to cover their fuck up that they didn't tell me. Instead, Beth, after she does this exam and she determines that this is a uterine issue... And now she knows, you know, I'm not just playing games for drugs, that there's something really bad going on. She just advised me to go to the ER. She takes off her glasses and sits down on the stool and comes over and sits across from me on, from the exam table like this is a tea party. Takes her glasses off and I'm like, what? You know, what? what? And I'm like, no, she's not fucking coming on to me when I'm sitting here crippled. Needing emergency care, they know I can't get it. Why isn't she having the net come in here and take my ass the fuck out of town? So, her judgment was clouded, but it was also not um, clouded in that 
she didn't feel that there was, you know, it wasn't like there was nothing wrong with me. She was just giving me drugs to get laid. It wasn't like that. Um, she was very hyper aware of um, what I was using, what I was using it for. She wanted to know the exact pink pattern, what was going on that you needed it. I mean, she was like, uh, like I said, being interviewed by a team of velociraptors. You don't get anything by her. That's why I wanted her. Because nobody could ever accuse her of being frivolous with her prescriptions. So I got to stop there and then I got to start over.